everyone. Uh, welcome to our Monday, May 18th, Victoria Day uh, MOA Kids Activities. Just a quick one for you this morning. Um, but before I get started with it, today is International Museums Day. So big shout out for museums all over the world um, as we all sort of celebrate in our, our new weird time. But um, this morning we're just going to do a quick experiment. Um, Sort of an observational experiment and it's drawing back to some of the things we have on our website um, so if I uh, haven't checked it out yet we have an, a section under our uh, kids activities and resources called infographics which are colorful images with lots of information about different topics and some of them not all of them uh, but some of them have activities built into those little infographics or they're infographics of activities um, and so one of them is ice patch archaeology and ice patches, they are a little bit different from glaciers um, in that ice patches are uh, a little bit more recent. Um, and they're previous winters snows that don't melt over summer. So they happen in alpine regions, not necessarily here in Ontario, um, but in the uh, southern Yukon they do. Um, and in these ice patches, you can find uh, all sorts of particularly organic materials that got trapped in the ice. Um, and as they melt a little bit over time, we can watch for things sort of emerge out of the ice and archaeologists do that. And the things that they can find can be up to 9,000 years old and they'll be artifacts or different objects that can include sinew. So that's the string made from the, the tendons inside animals and it's used to make arrows and uh, spears and sew clothing and all sorts of different things in the past um, as well as uh, is still used today for many things. Um, leather, feathers, all sorts of things get preserved in the ice because the ice in these ice patches, unlike glaciers, they're sedentary or they're staying in one place. Um, and that means that they're not moving around, they're not shifting things, they're basically just gently holding them in place. Um, and at the same time, they're very dry so it's a dry environment with the ice, as well as very, very cold. And that dry, cold, stationary environment allows for things to preserve that normally wouldn't preserve. So the activity that we have, um, or suggest for you to do, is called ice patch archaeology. And what you need to do is find a bunch of different artifacts, or a bunch of different artifacts, things that you can put into um, your ice patch for... Uh, to observe them. Um, so you can use things that are inorganic. Um, I've got a few things here. I've got a, a nickel and a piece of uh, pipe cleaner, sort of parse. Well, it's, this particular pipe cleaner is probably fully or, um, inorganic. All synthetic materials in the past they wouldn't necessarily have been. Um, I also have some organic materials. So I have some some beans and I have a couple squash seeds and some little pieces of dried corn corn kernel. You could use any type of any type of food, fruit, um, meat, a little piece of bone from a meal that you had, a piece of apple, cinnamon heart. I've thrown some of those in here too. Um, and you put them all into a Tupperware container for example, Tupperware container, dump them all in. Some of them will float at different levels. But before you do this, take each item and make a hypothesis. What will happen to this item, this particular artifact as it melts? Sitting out, put it outside. We're, we're gonna watch this melt over a period of time. Um, what's gonna happen to it? What does it look like now? And put that into a notebook. Then we're gonna fill this with water. We're gonna put it into the freezer um, and leave it for a day or so. And then we'll have a nice block. This is our ice patch that is melting a little bit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this, I'm gonna put it outside and I'm gonna watch it melt. And we're gonna see if being in the ice has affected the things that we put inside it. 
and we're going to see what they look like when we're done. If you want to, you can also, particularly if you use a lot of um, organic materials that will, uh, that will rot quickly, like meat or apples or um, and anything that will rot quickly over a few days out, out in the air, leave those outside too or leave them in a spot where they can rot away. And then when the ice is melted and you've extracted or you've pulled out the artifacts that you put in there, you can see how, if they're different or if they're the same. Um, and can see how things are preserved in our um, glacier, not glacier, <laughs> our ice patch um, environment. Um, one thing that I will say too before we go um, is that the artifacts that are pulled out of the ice patches particularly the very delicate organic materials like feathers, for example, um, when they're stored at the lab space or the storage facility that they're being stored at, they are kept in a freezer condition there too. And that's to replicate, to copy the conditions that they were in, in their ice patch. So give it a try. You can find um, the instructions for the Ice Patch Archaeology, as well as all sorts of different um, infographics about various topics, archaeology, the Medway resources, or the Medway Valley resources that we've been doing as well. Um, many of them are up there for you to, to see as well. So um, they are on our webpage at archaeologymuseum.ca and follow the link to the, uh, the Kids Crafts and there's a, a whole subsection entitled Infographics and you'll find them there. So. Uh, again, happy Victoria Day, everybody, and I will see you uh, later this week. Bye-bye.